Hello and welcome to World Now. It is official. President, the President Donald Trump of the United States begins a year-long process of withdrawing from the United States from the Paris Climate Accord. This move was announced in a statement on Monday by the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord but begin negotiations to re-enter either the Paris Accord or in really entirely new transaction on terms that are fair to the United States, its businesses, its workers, its people, its taxpayers. So we're getting out, but we will start to negotiate and we will see if we can make a deal that's fair. And if we can, that's great. And if we can't, that's fine. A pledge by U.S. President Donald Trump made back in 2017. And on Monday, his administration made it a reality. They formally notified the United Nations that the United States will withdraw from the Paris Agreement. It's the first formal step in a one-year process to exit the global pact to fight climate change. In a bid to boost U.S. oil, gas, and coal industries, Mr. Trump had vowed to pull out of the accord, citing an economic disadvantage if it were to remain part of it. The State Department letter to United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres started a clock on a process that will be completed one day after the 2020 U.S. presidential election on November the 4th, 2020. Environmental groups say they hoped Mr. Trump would be defeated in 2020 by a rival who would rejoin the agreement with bold new targets. The Obama administration signed the United States onto the 2015 pact, promising a 26-28% cut in U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by 2025 from 2005 levels. So we're getting Mr. Out. Trump campaigned on a promise to rescind to that pledge, saying it would hurt the U.S. economy while leaving other big polluters like China to increase emissions. But he was bound by U.N. rules to wait until November the 4th, 2019, to file exit papers. All the top Democratic presidential hopefuls seeking to unseat Trump in next year's election have promised to re-engage in the Paris Agreement if they win. Until its formal exit, the United States will continue to participate in negotiations over technical aspects of the agreement represented by Korea State Department officials. The United States and China, the world's two largest carbon emitters, have recently been leading negotiations of the Paris rulebook that outlines transparency and reporting rules for signatories. For more on this, I have joining me via Skype from Washington, D.C., global affairs analyst Calvin Dark. How significant now is this withdrawal of the United States from the Paris Agreement and the likely implications? Well, I think on the environmental climate change front, it's um, serious and unfortunate because I think it represents a setback. Because keep in mind, the Paris Accords were aspirational. They were non-binding um, commitments that world powers were um, committing themselves to in the hope of having national policies in each country that would address climate change. So in that sense, it's unfortunate. Now, politically, I believe this helps Donald Trump more than it helps Democrats who are running against him. Because even though a lot of people on the Democratic side understand the importance of fixing the climate crisis, it's not an issue that gets many people out to vote. However, for Donald Trump's supporters, who he's made to believe that the Paris Accord is the United States subsidizing the rest of the world that's not doing their part, that just further makes Trump's argument that he is making America great again by making America first. So from your analysis, you think that Donald Trump might get support from, you know, citizens in Illinois and other parts of the country, but do you think the withdrawal we understand, which is still subject to the outcome of next year's uh, United States presidential election, if Mr. Trump loses, the winner might decide to change course. Do you think that might likely happen? Oh, yes, because, you know, the year, because they waited 
um, the Trump administration waited till the year to the day when they could uh, officially withdraw. I promise you that if Trump is not reelected and a Democrat comes in office, even though they wouldn't be in power until January 20th, 2021, on election night, they will announce that they intend to rejoin the Paris Accords. And I think that the possibility of that is something that can motivate some Democratic voters. So from, you know, looking at the things, what we understand very, cl very clearly, let's understand what exactly this Paris Agreement then tends to do for other countries who are still in this accord. Do you see any dangers, as it were? I see dangers because one of the realities about fighting climate change is some countries are better equipped than others. And I think when you have one of the two biggest uh, emitters of carbon, the United States, pulling out of it, it not only takes away key leadership on the issue to help other countries that may not be as advanced when it comes to climate change, but it also takes away the incentive. Because if you're a country in the process of development, why are you going to go much further ahead than even the United States is going to protect the climate. So that's one of the reasons why it's unfortunate. And I also say that if Donald Trump is reelected, then it will be a huge step back because that will be another four years of the United States not taking leadership on this issue. And what are the, ch the chances that other countries in this Paris Agreement might likely pull out, seeing that the United States has, well, been the first to do so? I don't really see other countries pulling out of the accord because most of the commitments, you know, of course, non-binding. But I do see the accords being taken less seriously by some countries, which is unfortunate. And at that point, let's leave it at that for now. Thanks a lot, Calvin Dark, for your insights.